Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dark Arm Duels, and today we're going to be diving into the Gateway to Chaos with Blackluster Soldier. Because today we're going to be doing a debut deck profile of Blackluster Soldier on my channel. Um, now, I played with this deck for a little while, and I couldn't really get it right until the new support came out in Raging Tempest. But um, I actually got the deck to work pretty well, and without further ado, let's get into it. So let me set this to the side, and we will get into this. So first off, we're going to play three copies of Blackluster Soldier Super Soldier. Now he is a really interesting card because he has that old um, Elemental Hero Flame Wingman effect that when he destroys a monster by battle, he inflicts damage equal to the monster's attack to your opponent's life points directly. So it's really, really neat. It does count as a little bit of effect damage, so it's not battle damage. Um, and then when he's destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can special summon one guy, the Fierce Knight monster from your hand deck or graveyard which we'll get into that in just a little bit. Then we play one copy of the original vanilla Blackluster Soldier. Uh, he's kind of just a trade-in target and one for our Super Soldier Ritual. Um, but that, other than that, that's really the only reason we do play one copy of Blackluster Soldier. Um, it really does work nicely in the deck, but you don't need more than one. Uh, at one point, I was playing the pre-preparation of Rights engine before the new support came out, where I was playing three of him and then three of the Blackluster Ritual. It worked, but it made it so I didn't really have anything else but him. And, you know, having a 3k vanilla monster that you just gave up some good cards for, it doesn't really work out that well. So, then we play one copy of Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. Um, Envoy of the Beginning, just about everybody knows what he does. You banish one light, one dark, um, and then you can activate one or the other of his effects per turn. Either banish one card on the field, or target one monster on the field and banish it, that target, and he can attack the turn that you do, or he can attack twice, essentially, um, which, if he destroys a monster, he can attack twice, which is super nice. Um, and then we play one copy of Chaos Sorcerer, um, the reason we play Chaos Sorcerer is because of the two mini knights. If you banish them, they get their effects off and you get to search. And it is kind of a chaos deck in a sense, so we play one copy of Chaos Sorcerer just for that reason. He's in more spot removal because he can banish one card, and he's a 23 beat stick. So Chaos Sorcerer at one is perfect for this deck. You really don't need any more than one. Um, and, and that's the only reason we really play one, is so we can banish our mini knights and get a really nice beat stick on the field with spot removal. Then for our one Gaia the Fierce Knight card, we play one Charging Gaia the Fierce Knight. Um, with Charging Gaia, you can normal summon him um, without tributing, which is nice, but his attack becomes 1900, I believe, or it might be the other one, the Ascension Gaia. Um, yeah, his becomes 1900. And if he is tributed, you can add um, one Blackluster Soldier monster from your deck to your hand. So he searches your Envoy of the beginning, which is super, super nice. Um, and other than that, that's the only reason we play him is so if Super Soldier dies, I can special summon this from anywhere, which is nice. Um, then I play two copies of Black Dragon and two copies of White Dragon. With these guys, if you play them, if you can banish a Mini Knight, you get to... And what I call Mini Knights are... I'll show you them in a minute. But you can banish them to get the searches off. And plus, these let you go into some rank 4 plays. And they help out when Link Summoning comes out also. They'll let you uh, banish one from Grave to basically get a free level 4, and then you can normal summon another monster, and then send them both to Grave to get, like, Decode Talker or something like that out. And we'll do updates of that when, you know, they actually become legal in TCG. Um, then we play for some Search. We play three copies of Manju of the 10,000 Hand. Um, Manju just kind of lets us search either our Ritual Spell or our Black Luster Soldiers. That's the only reason we play them. He's kind of good in every single Ritual deck there is. Um, then we play, I chose to play three copies of Envoy of Chaos because he's kind of the hand trap of the whole deck. Um, essentially, he's a little bit of a complicated card because what he does is, is he increases the attack of whatever Blackluster Soldier monster uh, or a Guy of the Fierce Knight monster by 1500. And not only that, if they attack, then the monster that they're attacking becomes the original attack of the uh, Guy of the Fierce Knight or the Blackluster Soldier monster. So whatever you attack becomes either 3,000 or 2,300, which is neat. Um, so regardless, they're going to take 1,500 off of this when you discard it. Um, 
And sometimes you can get your Blackluster soldiers to attack twice, so they're going to take up to 3,000 damage. Plus, they're going to take the damage off of his effect as well. So, you know, they're going to take some damage with this. Um, and also, during the end phase, uh, you can banish one light and one dark from your graveyard to add this back to your hand, which is kind of nice. Um, it's a nice, quick, normal summon as well, because with the normal summoning abilities that you can have with him to overlay with your white and black dragons, it just works. Then we play three copies of Night of Beginning, and I'll do these two together because they're the last monsters of this engine. We'll do three Evening Twilights as well. Let's see if I can get that without going off camera. Yeah, there we go. Um, so basically these are the mini knights. What I'm referring to is the mini knights. Um, Night of the Beginning, um, Night of Evening Twilight. Basically what they do is they... Um, once per turn, they give your when you ritual summon with them, which usually you will, um, when they give Blackluster Soldier additional abilities. Uh, one of them gives I can't I can never remember which one, but one because I always use both of them to do it. But one of them that lets him attack twice. One of them lets him have a banish effect, and then I believe it's um, this one. Once per turn, you can target the um, Twilight Knight, a Blackluster Soldier monster. Gains uh, these effects. You can only use the effect of Evening Twilight once per turn. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and banish it. And once per turn, you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand face down um, until your opponent's next end phase, which is really nice. And if it's banished from your graveyard, then you can add one ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Um, then Beginning Night has some really interesting effects too. I really like Beginning Night as well. Everybody likes um, Evening Twilight better because he lets you get that one card out of your opponent's hand. So if you make BLS first, then your opponent's going to be down a card for the rest of the turn. Um, and Evening Twilight is once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and banish it. So I, I don't believe it stacks, but I might be wrong. Um, and then when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can have this card make a second attack. And this one is if it's banished, then you can add a Black Luster Soldier um, spell card. Or you can add a ritual spell card from your deck to your hand, which is also nice. So if you banish them both at once, you're going to get all your requirements to make another BLS. But you can only special summon one Super Soldier per turn, which is kind of sucky, but, you know, it, it works. Um, and that's it for the monster count. I believe it's like 22 monsters something like that, um, but it really does work this way. This is the best monster engine, and I've play tested it quite a lot because I love BLS ever since I was little, but um, let's get into the spells, guys. Quite a lot to go over with that. So, for the spells, we play one copy of Reinforcements of the Army because it searches all of our mini knights and Envoy of Chaos, one copy of Upstar Goblin just for a little bit more of consistency, Two Twin Twisters, because with Twin Twister, you destroy some back row so we can go off with our plays. Two copies of Trade-In, so we can discard our um, vanilla Black Luster Soldier, or maybe even a um, Super Soldier if we don't really need it. Because with Super Soldier Ritual, you can get it back later. Um, and then three of the new Ritual spell card. Well, it's not really new, but it's, it's the newest one. Um, Super Chulser Synthesis. Now this is a really neat card. You can um, send a light monster or dark monster from your hand and then send the opposite from your deck to the graveyard that equals eight, which is basically um, a Twilight Knight, which is the beginning night and the um, evening Twilight Knight. You send one of these guys from your hand and one from your deck and then you special summon out Super Soldier, essentially. Um, which is really, really, really nice. But you can only activate one Super Soldier Synthesis per turn, which isn't, I mean, it makes sense, but you already can only special summon one of these per turn, so, I mean, what's the point? Then we play two copies of Super Soldier Ritual. Um, this is kind of our recover one and our generic one. Um, its effect is, is that you can basically Ritual Summon a Blackluster Soldier monster from your, uh, hand by sending equal to eight to the graveyard. So you don't have to send a light or a dark. You can send another level eight or anything like that. Um, but it's really neat effect is, is that you can banish a light, um, one light and one dark monster from your graveyard, especially someone black luster soldier ritual monster from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions. So 
is not that big of a deal to send this to grave for Twin Twister and then go off from there. Uh, then we play three copies of Gateway to Chaos, which is our final spell card. Um, with Gateway to Chaos, it it's awesome. Every time a card is sent from the field or the graveyard to the graveyard, or from the hand to the graveyard, you get a counter on it. And then once it gets, it maximum is six, and then once it gets its three counters on it, you can uh, send three counters off of it, and then um, add one ritual spell card from your deck to your hand, which is nice. And then when it's activated, you can add a Black Luster Soldier ritual monster from your deck to your hand, which is, again, super nice. Um, and that's it for all the spells. Now let's really quickly get into the traps which is very slim. We play one copy of Beginning of Heaven and Earth, which I'm testing it. I like it early. I don't like it late. Um, basically what you do is you reveal three monsters in your deck, um, it consisting of at least, or three warrior monsters consisting of at least a Guy of the Fierce Knight or a Black Luster Soldier monster. And then your opponent randomly picks one. If they pick the Black Luster Soldier or the Guy, you get to keep it. If they don't, all of them go to grave. The other two always go to grave, which, you know, not a big deal. You can essentially massive foolish burial yourself, which is really nice. Um, then we play the Solemn Brigade, which is one warning and two strikes. And that's it. That's it for the main deck. Let's get into the extra. You don't really rely very heavy on this deck. I'm going to try on my channel to lean towards decks that don't really play so much of an extra deck anymore once Link Summoning comes out. But I still will make decks that will you know, use the extra deck and link summon, of course. So for the extra deck, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to play one Hope Harboring because, you know, we play rank eights. One Divine Knight Felgrand because, again, rank eights. Uh, one number 23 Dark Knight of um, the Underworld, which is really nice because you can pop spells and traps and swing directly for 2k, which can end games. And then one copy of Heretic Dragon... Um, Overlord of Heliopolis, which is really nice because he lets you pop monsters and send your um, mini knights from your hand to the graveyard so you can banish them later, which is really nice. If you get clogged up with them, you can, you know, do that. But at late game, you probably won't. Um, then we play the Utopia engine, which is Utopia, um, Utopia Prime, and then Utopia the Lightning, which basically is just a 5k beater. They can attack twice with 5k, which is just nice. Uh, one Rebellion, just gets big as shit. One uh, 66 Key Beetle, which is just two Dark Monsters, which is an Envoy of Chaos and an Evening Twilight. It's not hard to make, but it protects your BLS. Uh, since we play so many Warriors, one Blade Armor Ninja, because it attacks twice. One Honor Arc, because it can steal stuff. Castell, because it spins stuff. Giant Hand, because it negates stuff. Uh, Emerald, it... Um, Let's us recycle our stuff, and then Abyss Dweller, because it's generic. That's it. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory on the extra deck. You don't really need it all that much. Key Beetle's nice to go into to protect your BLS, and uh, Emerald's nice to recycle stuff back. That's all I really ever go into with this extra deck. Maybe Hope Harboring every so often if I'm grinding. But anyways, guys, that's it for this deck profile. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And uh, join Dark Armed Alliance in the description on Facebook. But anyways, guys, this is Dark Armed Duelist. I hope you've enjoyed this trip to the Gateway of Chaos. And I'm out.